Good morning and welcome back to my channel and morning devotions. My name is Maggie. If this is your first time stopping by, I hope you decide to like and subscribe and click that notification bell. It is Saturday, January the 7th. Our devotions are coming from Joyce Meyer's book called Trusting God Day by Day. I don't know about you guys. I am really loving this devotion. I mean, all of them have... This is my third one <coughs> on this channel because I started April of 2021. And this is the third one I've gone through. And I am really loving it. Now, I know with Joanna Weaver's book, At the Feet of Jesus, I didn't cover that from um, January 1st through the 31st. I kind of came in part way, but still, this is the third one. <coughs> <coughs> just the seasonal stuff because it's been in the 70s all week and now it's like 37 degrees outside so my body's kind of freaking out over the the temperature change but anyway I love all of them but something about Joyce Meyer that seems to really connect with who we are like yes that's exactly me <laughs> so um, our devotion today is entitled form new habits our opening scripture is out of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, and again, she uses the amplified. Thank you again. I can't remember who, who reminded me of that. Therefore, if any person is engrafted, that's in the parentheses, engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, he is a new creation, a new creature altogether. The old previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh and new has come. I think that's one of the promises of being a born again believer that really hits home for me is we are new, the, the old me. And it's we seem to always feel there's some level of discipline on our part that needs to take place instead of allowing the Holy Spirit to transform us and change us. Because if you have the same mind and heart, nothing really changes. I mean, you might be able to put a mask on and pretend, but inside you're still the same. You haven't changed. You see what I'm saying? So, all right, let's hear how Joyce expounds on this. God's word teaches us that when we receive Christ as our Savior and Lord, he gives us a new nature. He gives us his nature. He also gives us a spirit of discipline and self-control, which is vital in allowing us to choose the ways of our new nature. He gives us a sound mind, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, instead of fear, we have a sound mind. And that means we can think about things properly without being controlled by emotion. A sound mind. If you're controlled by emotion, ask the Lord to give you a sound mind. Sound mind puts those things in their proper place and it can think correctly. We just discussed this, didn't we? A couple of days ago this week. The way we once were passes away. And we have all the equipment we need for a brand new way of behaving. God gives us the ability and offers to help us, but we are not puppets and God will not manipulate us. We must choose spirit over flesh and right over wrong. Free will choice, as she says, we're not puppets manipulated by God. He wants us to choose. Our renewed spirits will then control our souls and bodies, or to say it another way, the inner person will control the outer person. Without God's help, we have difficulty doing things in moderation. Boy, don't I know it. We frequently eat too much, spend too much money, have too much entertainment, and talk too much. Yes, 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 and yes. Oh my gosh. We are excessive in our actions because we behave emotionally. 
And after the thing is done and cannot be undone, we regret doing it. We, but we can choose to form new habits, not doing something just because we feel like it, but instead doing what will produce the best result in the end. I don't think we think things through. I don't think we're intentional enough in our actions. We might in some areas be intentional with a purpose and a plan, but we really need to live more intentionally and less on autopilot, you know? Lord, produce that fruit in me. We do not have to live in regret. God gives us his spirit to enable us to make right and wise choices. He urges us, guides us, and leads us, but we still have to cast the deciding vote. If you have been casting the wrong vote, all you need to do is change your vote. Forming new habits will require making a decision to not do what you feel like doing unless it agrees with God's will. Trust in him. Okay. God wants you to live out of your new nature, not your old one. Every time you put your trust in him, cast the deciding vote to obey. His spirit transforms you and makes you more like him. Oh, I love it. I read in Proverbs 7 today, which is more about sexual purity. And I, Proverbs is just chock full of so much wisdom. Even though six, I mean, five and seven have been about sexual purity and staying away from immoral woman directed at men. I think we can definitely agree that sexual purity isn't just something men need to pursue. <laughs> Women need to pursue it too. And reading the wisdom in Proverbs for that and making a choice because... Those two chapters in Proverbs, which address that issue, are all about following your base nature, what your flesh wants to do, and to stop doing that, and to not pursue that, to pursue God, because the choice will lead to your death. I mean, the wrong choice will lead to your death. It, I mean, it all ties in with all of this. It's God's word is, is alive, and it is helping us to live the way God wants us to live, according to his nature, not according to ours. That's the whole basis of a Christian life, is our decision to stop living our way and to choose his way. It's that simple. Simple but hard. <laughs> because our flesh and our spirit war against one another. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for another word that is so encouraging. Father, we, we know all we have to do is choose to make the right choice. And you see the rut some of us are stuck in, the, the vicious cycle of continuing to do the same things and following, Lord God, after our own flesh instead of pursuing, Father God, you and your way. Help us where we're falling short. Help us, Lord, to form new habits. Help us to hear your voice and to choose to obey it that we, O oh God, will be able to walk in better blessing in our life and represent you well. We thank you, Lord, because we know it's simple. Your mercies are new for us every morning. Thank you, Lord, for helping us every day in Jesus' name. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. If you haven't already, I hope you decide to like and subscribe and click that notification bell. All of those who have subscribed, you guys are blowing me away. Thank you for your encouraging comments. It means a lot. My mother is doing very well. She had her first physical therapy appointment yesterday, and she did extremely well. Um, they were very encouraging. They're going to be coming out a couple of times a week. 
And then my daughter, who's studying to be a phys physical therapist's assistant, will be helping my mother on the days when the physical therapist isn't here working with her. So I am confident my mother is getting herself up uh, using the walker. So the strength is being restored to her body. And right now, if you want to focus your prayers, we need her to gain weight. And so we kind of have an idea and we're doing the things that they ask of us of why she is, uh, why she lost weight. I believe it was the hiatal hernia. Um, and my mom just wasn't eating enough. She would get full quickly because of the hernia and think that she was done. And so she wasn't getting nearly enough. But now we know what we can do and the different things we can do to make her eating process easier. And so... I'm excited about that. I think she's really making a lot of tremendous progress and having breakthroughs. And I know that's because you've been agreeing in prayer with me. So thank you for that. God bless you and bye until next time.